Hello, I am Dr. Anas Mani. This is the second part of the ECG analysis of pediatric ECG. In the uh, part 1, I stopped with the left bundle branch block. It was not complete. So for continuation sake, I am starting from there. Left uh, bundle branch block is most commonly caused by coronary artery disease, hypertensive disease or dielectric cardiomyopathy. It is unusual for left uh, bundle branch block to exist in the absence of organic disease. The left bundle branch is supplied by both the anterior descending artery, which is a branch of the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. Thus, patients who develop left bundle branch block generally have extensive disease. This type of block is seen in 2 to 4 percent of patients with acute myocardial infarction and is usually associated with anterior infarction. Diagnostic criteria for left bundle branch uh, block are uh, QRS duration equal to or more than 0.12 second, broad monophasic R wave in lead V lead 1, V5 and uh, V6, absence of Q wave in lead V5 and V6. Associated features like displacement of ST segment and T wave in an opposite direction to the dominant deflection of the QRS complex that is appropriate uh, discordance. Then poor R wave progression in the chest leads. Then RS complex rather than monophasic complex in lead V5 and V6. And left axis deviation that is common but not invariable finding. Uh, to memorize these things, I would advise you to have a diagnostic case of left bend branch block. And then uh, read these points and I, uh, identify the finding in the ECG. And, uh, three four times your practice it's easy to memorize these points now let us see what is sinus tachycardia sinus tachycardia is usually a physiological response but may be precipitated by sympathomimetic drugs or uh, endocrine disturbance for example salbutamol uh, or terbutaline nebulization the rate uh, rarely exceeds 200 beats per minute in adult. The rate increases gradually and may show beat to beat variation. Each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. The P wave morphology axis are normal, or, uh, although the height of the P wave may increase with the heart rate. PR interval will shorten. With a fast tachycardia, the P wave may become lost in the preceding T wave. Supraventricular tachycardia. It can arise from the atria or sinoatrial node. Um, a sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and atrial tachycardia. Then supraventricular tachycardia from the AV node, atrioventricular node, that is atrioventricular uh, reentrant tachycardia, and atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia. So they are the main supraventricular tachycardias. We will be discussing how to diagnose this. Now just familiarize with these terms, that's all. One of these uh, previous uh, videos, I have told you uh, the various algorithms. You can go back uh, to those videos and uh, refresh your memory. The electrocardiographic characteristics of uh, atrial arrhythmias. What's the criteria of sinus tachycardia? The P waves have normal morphology. Atrial rate is uh, 100 to 200 beats per minute. Regular ventricular uh, rhythm. Ventricular rate is also 100 to 200 beats per minute. That means uh, P rate will be equal to R rate, R rate. P, P interval and R, R interval will help you. One P U precedes every QRS complex. So that is sinus tachycardia. What is atrial tachycardia? Abnormal P wave morphology. Atrial rate 100 to 250 beats per minute. Ventricular rhythm usually is regular. And variable ventricular rate may be seen. Now what is atrial flutter? Undulating short toothed baseline F wave that is flutter wave, atrial rate 250 to 350 beats per minute from the PP interval. Then regular ventricular rhythm, the ventricular rate typically is 150 beats per minute that is 2 is to 1 a uh, atrial ventricular block. 4 is to 1 is also common, 3 is to 1 and 1 is to 1 blocks are uncommon. Atrial fibrillation. In this P wave is absent, oscillating baseline that is fibrillation waves are seen, atrial rate 350 to 600 beats per minute, irregular ventricular rhythm and ventricular rate is something between 100 and 180 beats per minute. The electrocardiographic analysis should include measurement of the ventricular rate, assessment of the ventricular rhythm, identification of the 
P wave, then fibrillation waves, measurement of the atrial rate, establishment of the relation of P wave to the ventricular complexes, the importance of which was shown in one of the algorithms uh, which was telecast in the first few videos in this channel. So please go back and consult those videos. Now let us come to the pediatric uh, ECG proper developmental changes in ECG. The marked changes that occur in cardiac physiology and chamber dominance during the perinatal transition are reflected in the evolution of the ECG during the neonatal period. Because uh, vascular resistance in the pulmonary and uh, systemic circulation is nearly equal in a term fetus, the intrauterine work of the heart results in an equal mass of both the right and left ventricles after birth systemic vascular resistance rises when the placental circulation is eliminated and the pulmonary vascular resistance falls when the lungs expand. These changes are reflected in the ECG as the right ventricular wall begins to thin. The ECG demonstrates these anatomic and the hemodynamic features principally by changes in QRS and T-wave morphologic features. It is recommended that a 13-lead ECG be performed in pediatric patients, including lead V3R or V4R, which are important in the evaluation of right ventricular hypertrophy. On occasion, lead V1 is positioned too far leftward to reflect the right ventricular forces accurately. In premature infants, ECG electrode gel may produce contact among all precordial leads. During the first uh, days of life, right axis deviation, large uh, R wave and upright T waves in the right precordial leads that is V3, R, V4, R and V1 are the norm normal things. You can see in the picture shown. Electrocardiogram in a normal unit of less than 24 hours of age is shown here. Not the dominant R wave and upright T wave in lead V3, R and V1. The V3, R speed is 50 millimeter per second. Be familiar with uh, normal ECGs in children because uh, if you are uh, not aware of these normal ECGs, you may be wrongly interpreting if you are comparing these ECGs with that of adult. As pulmonary vascular resistance decreases in the first uh, few days after, after birth, the right precorded T waves become negative. In the great majority of instances, this change occurs within the first uh, 48 hours of life. Upright T waves that uh, persist in lead V3, R, V4, R and V1 beyond one week of life are an abnormal finding. Upright T wave in persisting in V3, R, V4, R and V1 beyond one week of life are abnormal finding indicating right ventricular hypertrophy or strain even in the absence of QRS voltage criteria. The T wave in V1 should never be positive before 6 years of age may remain negative into adolescence. The T wave in V1 should never be positive before 6 years of age and may remain negative into adolescence. This finding represents one of the most important yet subtle differences between pediatric and adult ECGs and is a common source of error when an adult cardiologist interpret pediatric ECG about which I just mentioned. In a newborn, the Q, uh, uh, mean QRS uh, frontal plane axis normally lies in the range of uh, plus 110 to plus 180 degree. The right side chest leads reveal a large positive R than negative S wave and may do so for months because the right uh, ventricle remains relatively thick throughout infancy. Left sided leads that is V5 and V6 also reflect right side, uh, right side dominance in the early neonatal period when the RS ratio in this lead may be less than 1 that is R small and S deeper. A dominant R wave in V5 and V6 reflecting left uh, ventricular forces quickly becomes evident within the first uh, few days of life. Over the years QRS axis gradually shift leftward 
and the right ventricular forces slowly regress. Lead V1, V3, R and V4 are displayed. Prominent R wave until 6 months to 8 years of age. Most children have an RS ratio more than 1 in lead V4 or until they are 4 years of age. T waves are inverted in lead V4 or V1, V2, V3 during infancy. They remain, remain so into the middle of the second decade of life and beyond, about which I just mentioned. The electrocardiogram of a normal infant is shown here. Please uh, see the picture carefully. Note the tall R and small s in V4R and V1 and the inverted T in these uh, leads. A dominant R wave is also prominent, uh, also present in V6. The ECG of a normal child is uh, shown here. Mm, please look at carefully not the relatively tall R wave, the inversion of the T wave in V4R and V1 again here. These are all normal. So that's it. So that is the session on uh, initial part of the ECG reading of a pediatric patient please visit the site uh, www.youtube.com slash acepgmat i am dr nasmani once again thanking you